can't preach like this, I need fire, I need fire. I can't stay married like this, I need some fire, I need fire, fire. Is there anybody in the room who needs the fire of God tonight? Oh, come on, it's time to worship. Sometimes y'all feel like, y'all don't know why we do what we do. But it's the reason why we do it. We love God. This ain't fake, it's real. Ow! Hey, hey, welcome to Fire Unfiltered, where you're being touched by the fire and power of God. If you're seeking inspiration, encouragement, healing, miracles, signs, and wonders, you found it right here on Fire Unfiltered with your host, Latangela Rogers, who delivers empowering messages that purifies our hearts, shapes our character, and awakens our spirits. And now, here's Latangela. Hey, 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 it is your host, Latangela Rogers, and I want to welcome you to today's podcast, Fire Unfiltered, where this is your place for transformation and restoration. That's where we jumpstart you. And so I'm so excited to be with you today. And um, you know what? I think we're, um, we're right on time. I don't think we're ever late. I think we arrived right on time. So this show is being brought to you by my nonprofit organization, Rose of Jericho Community Development, Rose of Jericho Community Development. And um, my nonprofit basically um, is a place that brings transformation and restoration to broken infrastructures in the communities that we serve. For more information about what we do, you can visit our website at www dot rose of jericho dash cd.org and again that's www dot rose of jericho dash cd.org you are in for a treat on today so guess who's back with us nicole martinez and i'm so excited we are here and we are pumped and we are ready to go remember i promised you a part three to our series focus we, um, we weren't able to jump on last week and do it, but last week we talked about you and I together, all of those that listened in, lost identity. And um, we probably are intertwined some more of that in this uh, conversation on today's show, but it's going to be on the topic focus because we I, I don't want to leave January without reminding you how critical it is for all of us to remain focused, to remain in our place of obedience. And I myself personally have started to see my struggle areas and how much more I need to focus on those struggle areas to get to where God is wanting me to be. And so I hope you are taking the time to do self-evaluation We literally only have one more day in this month. Literally one more day in this month. So for some of you that are listening to the podcast, you are already in the last day of the month, already living out that, but just reanalyze, focus yourself. So when you go into February, you already have an idea as to what to expect, what you have to work on. And so with that being said, hi, Nicole. Hi, Latangela. How are you? I'm good. I think we are both kind of tongue-tied today. Like, this has yeah. been something, something <laughs> <quite funny. laughs> <laughs> some type funny on today. I mean, I I know I've been a loss for words lately, and um, I've just been kind of spacey. I don't even really know what's up, but maybe I do, but it's okay, though. <laughs> yes. Okay. So, um, you know what? Let me open us up in prayer, and then you can tell us about what you have been up to, okay. and if you have any uh, future things jumping off that you want to mention before we get started. Absolutely. Let us do that. So, Father, we thank you for allowing us to be together in fellowship. Father, we ask that you would guide our lips and that you be the head of the show. We ask that you would um, protect us even in these digital airways, Father God, that 
the, the reception is very clear on today. Um, you see my pain areas and my struggles with this, but Father, just bless us to have a clear show on today. Um, we shut every demonic door and um, every evil present out. Father God, in the name of Jesus, touch the hearts of those individuals that are listening, Father God, that they may be able to receive what they are looking for or in searching of. Father, grant us divine access to the heavens, that you would speak your oracles through both of us on today. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Okay, hey. Nicole, what's up? Hey, hey, hey. Um, Happy New Year and um, all the good stuff. Uh, things have been great. Um, I have, uh, keeping up with our theme <laughs> of focus, <laughs> I have been extremely focused with uh, the business and with kind of a new focus, uh, a new direction, I should say, um, on where I'm going. You know, my whole goal was to be able to break into um, the, black and the black and brown community in, in mental health and being able to kind of wow. take it outside of the office setting. Right. And yes, and this year is the year I'm taking it out the office setting. Um, I will say completely in a sense and really going into the airwaves. So I am um, starting to do master classes. Uh, I'll, yes. I'm creating content for that and I'll be working on um, the um, producing master classes now. Yes. In addition to that, uh, I am going to, well, not going to, but I am starting uh, my own podcast. And so I will be not only still uh, guest starring with you, but I'll, <laughs> yep. <yeah. laughs> but I'll be doing some other things for myself, uh, you know, on, on my own as well. Um, and then as time goes on, we will be um, one of the most, I guess, personal years of my life um will produce a memoir and so ah. I'm, yes I'm getting my book out um and I'm I'm actually sharing I'm telling all I'm telling about how I I recreated uh, rewrote the narrative how I re recreated um the trajectory of my life and how uh you know one day when I was lost and not focused you know and I really prayed on to God and said okay what why why am I here why am I on this wilderness um and so as he started revealing and sharing um I will be um kind of going through that journey and I'll take people through that journey and let them see why I'm so happy right now you know why oh. I truly uh enjoy my life now you know um and how they can do it as well. And so the last thing I, uh, I'll say is that uh, one of the last things we're doing is we're doing a retreat where we will start creating retreats, uh, healing retreats for people. So those are what I have going on this year. Yes, and I think the retreats are becoming a big thing because, yeah. um, you know, that um, is something that our brand is launching as well, um, but in 2023. Mm -hmm. So we we're going to do 2022. So for all of you that have gotten an announcement or whatever on it, we are moving it to 2023 um, simply because I want to put more focus into it and be more intentional about it. Mm -hmm. And I don't want to rush it just because, you know, oftentimes we, God will give us a glimpse of something and we think we are supposed mm -hmm. to do it like right now. Right now, yeah. And so I was just going to be doing it like right then. But then I was like, no, you need to be more intentional and focused about it because mm -hmm. you're talking about um, bringing in broken souls into a location. And we've got to know how to handle these individuals that are coming, mm -hmm. seeking that divine healing, seeking restoration, transformation and how to move forward in their life you know so we have to be more intentional about who we partner with for this event all of those different things you know which brings me to um mention this book that i just um got told about i already knew about have you heard of dr wayne uh dyer no i have not oh uh, he's a new new york times best-selling author and he has a book out. It's called The Power of Intention. Mm. And um, it's saying, learning to co-create your world your way. 
So we are co-creators of our world. Absolutely. But and the reason why we are not the creator is because we didn't, we're not, we, we didn't create ourselves. We have to partner with the Holy Spirit. We have to partner with God to be able to create the life that we want. So it has to be one in his will and his purpose for our lives. And we have to be intentional about what, once he reveals his purpose for us, we have to be intentional about being able to walk in it or to create it, right? Mm -hmm. And so um, I wanted us to just jump in. I do salute you, my sister, for everything that you're jumping off and doing because I can oh. remember us remember we were in Oklahoma City we've yeah. come a long way since Oklahoma City yeah. <laughs> and, it's so exciting and you know that's what the the we were talking about the division board parties it's like uh because this is the eighth party I've hosted and it's like oh my gosh we've come so far from the very first one when we were all over the place just putting everything on the board because we wanted to accomplish everything in life <laughs> Right, and We're isn't so it focused now? But then there, that comes the attention. But I want to give, um, go back to our focus scripture because you just mentioned the vision board, and we have to mm -hmm. talk about what happens when God gives us the vision. And so, in Jeremiah, you know, that was Jeremiah one, um, not verse nine through seventeen, but we're specifically where we're starting at uh, verse. Um, 1 and 11 and it says the word of the Lord came to me saying what do you see Jeremiah and I said I see a rod of an almond tree so the the focus of this is Jeremiah the Lord asked him Jeremiah what do you see mm -hmm. and he had to tell him what he saw Mm -hmm. But in order for him to tell him what he saw, he had to have had great focus in order yes. to see what it is that God had put before him to see. And so how can we create a vision if our focus is off? Like you said, there's times when we start vision boarding and we start posting all this stuff on the vision board. Absolutely. But is that really what God is showing us? Right. Or is it just something that we just want to post because we feel like we have to have it? And so we have to be very intentional about what it is that we put on these vision boards because it might not be in the will of the Father for us. Mm -hmm. And I was telling you before the show started, when you mentioned about the vision board, that I created my digital vision board, but I have to go back now and redo some stuff and really make it more, even more focused and intentional. So tell us about your journey and what happened to you when you were vision boarding. Oh, wow. So in the very beginning, honestly, um, the very first vision board was done out of desperation. And that is the honest to God truth. And it was like, okay, I cannot, like, I knew there was more to my life and I knew I wanted more. I just didn't know what. And I just knew that, okay, I, I remember the part of the Bible where it says, write the vision and make it plain. Right. And so I was like, okay, let me do, do this now you know, is it, was it popular to have a vision board party? Kind of, so, sort of, but I still didn't know what, you know, what I was doing. So that very first one, um, I was putting a lot of stuff on there. Lo and behold, all of it has been ac accomplished, but it was not sensible that it would all be accomplished within that one year, right? Mm -hmm. And so um, each year I started scaling down more and more like, no, I need to focus on this. Okay, now I need to focus on this. Now I need to focus on this. Okay, well, this area of my life, I'm really happy with. Now I need to develop this area of my life. So mm -hmm. as it, I, I took, um, I almost was like, uh, I dissected a large <laughs> vision and I, broke it down into sections and each year I would work on a section at a time a section at a time this year the reason why is so like it was so profound and we even um the girls and I who meet every year we've been doing like there's been a, a core group for like the last um eight vision board parties 
I was, I told them, I said, wow, we finished a lot sooner this year than we have in years past. And they, and they even stated, they were like, yeah, because we all know what we want now. We all know where areas we're going to focus on. We walk in, we walk into the building and um, mm. knowing what we're going to put on that board, knowing what we're going to focus on for that year, because we have now really been so in tune with our lives and so in tune with maybe the parts that needs to be developed a little bit more we've been so laser focused on that that we are we walk in knowing exactly what we need now and knowing exactly what we're going to ask for and you know what that um that really gives us a very good depiction of what it is that we should be doing we had no idea we were going to be talking to you about vision boarding today we didn't discuss that but it is something that has to happen so if you haven't already created your vision board for this year, you probably, and if you already created it, you might want to go revisit it because we can put something so large out there, but it's not obtainable. So Mm -hmm. are you going to be able to obtain it? And uh, I want to add to what you were saying, like, um, I wanted to be more intentional about focusing on me in 2022. So I have done all of focusing on my community and focusing on that and I'm still going to do that but I have neglected a large part of me like for me I've gained 100 pounds in six years Mm -hmm. (laughs) that is uh, you know crazy so somewhere I've gotten off track with my own self-care and I need to come back into alignment because we have to have our spirits aligned with the father, because if we don't, then everything else is closed off. So how can you take care of other people if you're not even taking care of yourself? So, and that, that is so true. And I think that that's what it has happened with us at the parties. Um, we, well, you know, while the parties more so are gathering, um, like I said, 2015 was the first year that uh, we all came together. And it was so like, we had these massive boards and we put everything on that board. and as time went on, you know, when we started saying, Hey, at least for myself, I was like, okay, Hey, I've been focusing on my business. I've been focusing on my kid. Like, but what happened to me? Like I've lost myself in all this. And that's what, you know, so this year I, I've even proclaimed it verbally. Um, I guess, social media, (laughs) you know, things like that. But this is my, this is going to be my most personable year. This year will be, it's it's personal. It will be personal. Yes. Anything I put out is, is about the growth of Nicole. See? And I think that is pretty much what he's really calling a lot of us to. You know what I mean? If we really pay attention. I was just listening to someone's uh, YouTube, um, and I won't put the person's name out here, but she said, um, this is the year of the bride. Bye. So if to me, that is personal. It is personal. And she talked about the 10 virgins. So, you know, the 10 virgins in Matthew 25 and that parable with the, the virgins and the lamps, mm-hmm. your oils in the lamps. Are you going to be obedient and prepare or are you going to be disobedient and your lamp goes without oil and then you're shut out of the party? You don't get to come to the wedding. And so in order for you to be able to participate in the wedding, you have to take care of you. This Mm -hmm. is an individual thing. This is, this is an individual thing, which will then turn into collaborations and partnerships, because how can you go into collaborations and partnerships if you are not whole? Right. So whatever about you that needs to be fulfilled This is the time at this half, the first half of the year is our focus on preparing. The second half of the year, we're going to see how these connections and whatever else is going to come forward for the bride, you know what I mean? Because in any marriage, this is the year 2022, double, double. And everybody said, it's so cliche. No, it's the year of divine partnership. Yep. So this half, we focus on us. The next half, 
it's going to be all about the partnership. The partnership. I agree. Expediency. You know what I'm saying? So we are partnering with God to fix whatever we need to fix. And then after that, he's going to partner us with whoever we're supposed to partner up with on this earth to carry out. And uh, the, 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 you know, the ministry that he has given unto us. So, uh, you know, you, you said a mouthful and I'm so excited because it's just a confirmation for, for me and probably all of those people that are listening to us on today, you know? Yes, I totally agree. And, and, and I, I love the part that you said about the whole partnership, because that's the thing, you know, we forget that we are the foundation before we can partner up with anyone else. We have to make sure that we are together. Um, mind, body, soul, vision, everything. Right. right. Um, and intellect. And so, um, when it comes to you know, one of the things that we're talking about is being focused, being laser focused, we have to know it's almost like we're dating ourselves. When someone says, what do you want out of this? What do you want out of this relationship? I need to know what I want out of this relationship with right. myself, you know? So therefore when I partner with someone else, I could, I know exactly what to say and how to present it. Right. And that is so good because if we are not focused, how are we going to know what to say? Mm -hmm. Or what we even want, you know, right. I mean, think about it. If you're dating someone and they're sitting there like, okay, what do you want? I don't know. Well, what do you, I don't know. Well, I don't know. That's a little boring, right? <laughs> uh, you know what? I, I am. <laughs> and eventually it's going to fall off and you're going to exactly. lose sight. You're going to lose focus. <laughs> exactly. So the person that you, that comes to you that you should be partnering up with you you didn't prepare so you don't have a clue mm -hmm. and that person just walks out because you didn't know like if that's the same thing like where he shut the door he shut the door because you didn't know you didn't have a clue right so yeah. this is the thing that says jeremiah what do you see you need yeah. to focus we need to focus i don't want to say you because it's not you that we're just talking to it's all of us we really have to be focused like never before and we can't allow people to dictate our time and yes. your schedule you know like don't come filling up my calendar with new nonsense right you know so don't allow people to fill up your calendars with nonsense in this time in this year fill your calendar with the things of the lord what is being spirit-led and from, from that everything else will take care of itself it'll take care of itself either it's going to fall off or it's going to come into alignment because mm -hmm. <laughs> if it don't come into alignment it's got to move around because you're not a match you know and i'm looking uh i'm going to be um traveling on this week and the location that i'm traveling to the lady that's mentoring me happens to be there i didn't even know i, thought, I don't know why i thought she was somewhere else <laughs> And, I, and she was like, no, this is where I am. I said, oh, no, I have no idea. So I'm meeting with her. And then you're in that location. So I'm like, now it's just turning into like a what? Like, I can't even believe this is happening. Like, my mind is blown. So I was like, I know I must be moving in the some type of direction, you know, because I'm aligning with different people that I never expected to align with you know, and, and i'm saying not in a bad way but it's just like blowing my mind because i had no idea no idea and so i mean i'm just excited and i'm just gonna follow the yellow brick road you know right uh but i know that i have to know what he's showing me i know that i have to know what he's showing me and i have to be prepared to do whatever he's instructing me to do and again, I tell you, I always struggle with getting out of the bed at 1 a.m. in the morning. My mm -hmm. wake up time every day is between 1 and 2.30 a.m. And I still, I am doing more, more better with getting up uh, in terms of opening my eyes and opening up my mouth to say, mm -hmm. Father, what is it? But I still haven't gotten up <laughs> to get down on my face and be like, okay, here, Lord, I'm here. But I'm like, Lord, okay, I know you're waking me up. So what is the deal? Like, it's the deal, yeah. what is it that you need me to pray for? What is it that, what is going on? You know? So I'm trying to, to, 
to be more intentional and actually get out of my bed. And I set up this whole little office desk at the end of my bed. Mm -hmm. So my, my ottoman used to be there. Now I done pushed the whole table up there and made it like this desk. And I right. made a makeshift desk because I'm like, this is where I need to sit at that time of the morning, but I still haven't got to this place yet. So I'm, I'm going to make it there, but I'm visualizing myself just sitting here at 1 a.m. in the morning and just hearing what the father has to say. And I put my candles out. It's just crazy. It's so, perfect. That's perfect. You know, the one, one of the things in mental health that we talk about is guided imagery. And that's, that is a visualization activity that we do. Um, and that's how we help our clients to get to the other side is yeah. by visualizing where it is that you want to be um, and becoming again, I'll use the word laser focus on that visualization. And so we actually help guide them um, through guided imagery to where it is that they want to be through that visual visualization. So, so Blake, break it down a little bit more because when we're visualizing something, how do we even get that vision? Like I just for me, I saw this table being there and I just put it up there and it fit perfectly. It's not taking up any extra space there, the space that it should be, right? And right. I can still walk around my room and everything else. But how does a person get to that place where they're able to visualize and see what they haven't seen before? Oh, wonderful. Um, you know, a lot of times, especially as therapists, what we have to do is we have to do what we call um, provoking act provoking act activities, right? Mm -hmm. Or thought provoking activities, sorry, um, is what I should have said. And so we will have them to one breathe um, because the first thing of, about vis visualization is to be able to feel relaxed. Um, we need to tap into your senses. Uh, be able to tap into the that part of us that we we're, is kind of guarded and that um, we're protecting, so to speak. And what the way we do that is put our clients into a more relaxed state. And then once we do that, then we start asking or probing um, with questions and giving them not necessarily planting seeds, you know, but just kind of tapping into would it be this, would it be that just get very overall general. And then again, we take that general. It's just like what I said earlier, we take the general and we get, we start narrowing it down more and more and more and make it more and more specific as to what it is that they're looking for. So it's almost like um, brainstorming, you know, in a sense. And so you, you brainstorm, you have the big, um, cloud <laughs> of questions and you just start narrowing it down and so you get to that one particular um vis visualization that really speaks out to you and then that's what you focus on okay. and sometimes it takes a couple you know a couple of sessions We're, you know none of this stuff is an overnight activity right um sometimes you walk in and you're like okay yeah i know exactly what it is i know what i'm i'm blocking and some people don't know what they're blocking so oh, is it like a form of meditation when we start having imagery? Like, do we have to tap into that image, uh, um, meditation aspect in order to begin to have imagery? Yes, I would say um, you do. So meditation is uh, once again, a form of relaxation. Um, it's also, it's a form of relaxing the mind, but it's a form of being able to um, meditate the word meditate focus on right mm -hmm. uh focus on a particular subject so let's say for instance you're meditating on gratitude because you want to show more gratitude that's what you're focused on you're focusing on gratitude um if you want to meditate on patience what you're focused on is patience and so i'm meditating on the desire to create more patience in my life does that make sense? Yeah. And so, um, yes, it's, it's more it's more so about patience. Then we take it to the next level. So meditation is kind of like the first level. We'll take it to the next level. Now I'm 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 imagining. I'm visualizing myself in different situations and showing patience. I'm I'm imagining myself um, maybe with a difficult uh, client or with a difficult um, you know coworker. Um, a difficult friend or a hard conversation. And I'm imagining myself showing uh, gratitude or showing patience or being able to uh, show forgiveness, things like that. Um, 
I think that's too, I'm seeing like where you have to be intentional about what you're focusing on. Mm -hmm. Because um, oftentimes I know if we go into meditation, um, we bring a whole lot of clutter in with us that doesn't allow us to really see what we are interested in seeing. Correct. So how do we um, detox before, like empty ourselves out before sitting down to actually focus to get the imagery that we want in our mind to be able to focus on? So one of the techniques that I love using um, is what I call a throw up <laughs> technique. Okay. And so um, I allow my clients to, um, or I guess the technical term is kind of like a, um, a free um, word association, this free word. And so you just kind of just start spitting everything out, whatever, I tell them, don't think about it. What is, what is, what is coming to your mind right now? Like, I don't like this. This is pissing me off or I don't like it. It makes me feel uncomfortable. Why? You know, so I'll start asking questions, like just start spitting it all out. Let's, let's throw up, throw up, throw up, throw up to the point where eventually a lot of my clients are like, oh, wow, that feels better because they they release a weight off of them because what has happened is that they have learned to adapt to holding on to so much. Okay. And so the first, usually, you know, usually the first thing that comes to your mind is the truest, uh, is your truest form of thought. It's just that we, with our intellect have decided that we're going to think things through so that we can just say it in a more appropriate way, um, or be able to, uh, share what it is that we want to share and cover what it is that we want to cover but most of the time what you your first thought is your most purest thought um and, oh. and i really like that because um we we um <laughs> we regurgitate you like throw up you just get rid of everything <laughs> <laughs> I really like that like just do a dump get rid of everything and then take a seat because um if we i don't know i think that's um they talk about it uh, do you see you seen that movie eat pray love with julia robert yes 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 oh uh, yes. that movie i never get bored with that movie because it has a lot of what it is that you're talking about in that movie like mm -hmm. she decided she was going to take well she went all around the world just to figure out how to get into her imagery but we don't really have to do that. We can be in the comfort of our own home. And you just have to pick a quiet time to be able to sit and actually focus. And remember, this goes back to, you know, my own personal self. For me, it's 1 a.m. There's nothing happening. My house is always popping. So the only time I really can hear and focus on my imagery is that time in the morning because there is still, my neighbors are not banging, booming, banging. And people in my house are not boom, boom, boom and calling names and all of this all day, right? So my place of focus and being able to do that is right in the space that I have created. I, I seen on Fantasia, she showed how she created her little space for her place to actually get yeah. her imagery going. And it was beautiful. I said, look at her, her face is fire too. Like, wow. So we can create these spaces to actually have or experience exactly what it is. And I was talking to somebody about something and she said, you manifested that. So if you are in church, we don't really use manifestation in that term. We'll say, you know, but for the world term or whatever, they say manifestation and manifested, you know, you thought about this, this happened in your mind, whatever, you were thinking in your mind actually is coming to fruition. Like it's actually coming into the earth realm. So everything starts in our mind mm -hmm. and, and you, we have to train our thoughts um, to actually receive what it is that we are looking for in our life. So that's why that man said, uh, Dr. Dr Dreyer said, we are the co-creators because it comes in our minds first. Right. Everything is birthed. It's a seed in our mind. So 
we have to think more positive than negative because when we start thinking the negative, then all oh, it starts happening. And I'm seeing it happening more quicker now. So I want to start some things that's going on in my workplace right now. So I'm trying to fight to change the thoughts to positive instead of negative, right? So I'm like, so it, this environment can shift because whatever happens in my mind is starting to manifest now naturally. And I'm like, oh gosh, I got to shift this because this is really happening. As I think it, it's starting. So how can we shift our minds to that place you know like that, that is my number one question where my word is just believe <laughs> right you know I, I tell people all the time I'm a cognitive behavioral therapist I, I believe you change your mindset you change your behavior change your behavior you change your outcome that's my philosophy I um that's the principles in which I practice off of right? right and so everything I agree with you everything begins in the mind everything starts in the mind um and the mind controls a lot you know the mind controls the toes <laughs> if you really think right. about it so from head to toe um the mind controls everything the mind controls the hand if I say you know I want my fingers to move then I have to think it first and then my fingers move my fingers just don't move without me thinking it right and so um how do we change our mindset the word intentional is so true. We have to intentionally um, decide that this is what I want. Um, I believe in affirmations. And so affirmations are something that I even teach my clients about to do. And I share with people, you write down what it is that you want and you say it every single day. You know, if I want to, um, if I, if, if, if I believe, if I want to believe that, you know, I'm going to be a millionaire, I'm going to say I'm a millionaire, I'm a millionaire, I'm a millionaire. The thing about it is that eventually as time goes on, the, it, it's not that I'm going to just miraculously become a millionaire, but I'm going to start believing in it. everything that I do will be intentionally to get me to that next step, to get me to the millionaire status, right? So everything, the way that I think, whether it's, okay, well, you know what? I'm not gonna overspend on my credit card because I don't wanna be in debt because I wanna be able to purchase this property and then purchasing the property, it gets me one step closer to the millionaire status, you know? And so that's how we do that. Right, I'm telling you, oh, that's some good stuff. So I wanna take a music, break because i have one of my favorite all-time songs this song is old school y'all this is micah stampley holiness but the reason why i chose this is because um the song says change take my mind and transform it to yours to yours oh lord you know so i really want us to have a mind transformation so what while you're listening to the words of this song just begin to ask him to take your mind and transform it to his thoughts not your thoughts and then his thoughts are good and not evil so we are going to be right back after this song break this is micah stampley holiness be right back what I long for Holiness is what I need Holiness Holiness is what you want for me for me It's what I long for Righteousness 
you now know take my mind and transform it but you know what the part is i know you don't want to hear it but it's that still small voice that we're looking for Mm -hmm. and that quiet space to be a it's like a holy space because when you go into a place of meditation it go it's that's a pure place no matter how you look at Mm -hmm. it and so how can we transform our mind if we can't get into that that calm, pure space that invites in our imagination? Because we can't have our imagination if we're just all over the place. We just, it's a lot of backdrop. So go ahead, you want to say something? No, I think that that's when we do start working on finding additional help, you know, Mm. and being able to have someone to help guide us. It's called guided imagery for a reason. Um, There's someone who's there who can recognize that, who can say, hey, okay, 
we, we, this is, we, we have to dump this. It's time for us to let this go. Um, and so that's where therapy, you know, a lot of times people try to go around therapy, but therapy is really needed. It is yeah. definitely needed to heal. It's needed to, uh, I, one of the things I share with people is that we can't heal. We're not willing to reveal, you know, uh -huh. we have to be able to reveal it in order to heal it. Yes. And I definitely agree with you. I mean, I, I mean, I, I don't know. I don't even really know what else to say because this, it was just so full in such a short time, <laughs> you know, like we covered like so many different areas. It was like a wind that just blew by like, okay, you talk about this, 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 <laughs> <laughs> but the end result is we have to focus. Yeah. And if it requires you to get additional help, as Nicole stated, then you you have to get that help because you don't want the this first half of the year to go by and you mm -hmm. didn't focus and then mm -hmm. now it's time to make those partnerships and you miss them because you didn't focus on the first half yeah and and so i'm this is prophetic instructions we must do what we have to do in the first half to get to the second half that is going to bring us all what we are looking for. And some of us may have met our partners right now, but you're not going to get to them until you complete what you need to complete. So you can see it, but there is work required of you mm -hmm. in order for you to get to the hump, over the hump. You see? Mm -hmm. So, so. So that's another word for you. You might know who you're partnering with, but you can't actually partner with the person until you work on what needs to be worked on till you focus. Because then that person might be focused, but you are all over the place. So you're going to cause that person to crash and burn and miss what they're supposed to. You right. can't, that's in business. That's uh, um, your personal, even your family. You might be needing to help out your family. You can't do it because you can't focus. So Nicole, do so you want other, to say something? Yeah, and I was going to say the other thing about, um, well, one, I was going to say you you have to definitely be focused, but you have to want to be focused. You know, you have to want it. You have to desire it um, because that's, that's what's going to help you to really get to that next level. But also, you know, I agree with you. Like who, once you're focused, um, you will even make sure that you're partnering up with the right people, right? Wow. Because- that will take you off of your focus too if you partner up with the wrong person. So right. being focused is so important because it's the foundation of everything that you're trying to do. If if you choose to go to the next level. Now, if you want to, you know, stay where you right where you are, then of course, you know, just be all over the place. But ultimately, um, when you really want something else out of life, when you want more out of life, when you want the next level, um, it requires, it's almost like um, if you see those horses and they have those blinders on. Uh, why? Because they, because the owner wants that horse to only go straight and that's it. He does not want that horse to be um, uh, distracted by anything from the left or from the right. The, there's one job that a horse has to do, and that's to take the take the clients in the in the buggy, you know, to where he tells them to go. And that's what we have to do. We have to get so to the point where we are so laser focused that we don't see anything that's going on the left, no anything going on the right. People have to say, "Oh, did you see what happened?" No, I had no idea. I was too focused on what it is that I, I wanted to, I needed to do for myself and my life. Um, and that's the whole thing. And that's when we're not focused on what it is that he's called us to focus on. Uh, that's how we get ensnared and entrapped. And we know everybody else's happenings instead of knowing our own. So I want you, you said something, don't look to the left and don't look to the right. I always like to put the scripture to it. If we go to Joshua chapter one and we start with uh, verse seven, it says, only be strong and very courageous. Be careful to to do according to all the law which Moses, my servant, commanded you. Do not turn from it to the right or to the left, so that you may have success wherever you go. So mm -hmm. you hear what that you can look to the left or to the right, just as Nicole said. You must look straight ahead. That's what you call focus. You have to have laser sharp vision right now. You have to focus. Don't look to the left or the right, or you won't have success if you start veering off the track. And I see that I start getting out of alignment 
and I, I bring all my stuff because I don't know you and I don't, you know, I can't speak for Nicole either, either. So I have to put myself in the hot chair. <laughs> Every time I get off a track is because I lost focus. Something focus, comes and takes yeah. my focus. And it I tells see. us clearly, it says, um, you can't do not turn from it to the right or to the left so that you may have success wherever you go. So mm. I want to caution you too to say, you can't tell everybody where you're going. And yes. Because that's when a lot of the distraction starts coming because people start putting their own freaking input and you now are distracted. Whereas you had a clear vision as to why you were doing something that you were doing and now it's diluted and now you're confused. And so there are specific things that I'm sure Nicole is working on and I'm sure that I'm working on that we just can't say nothing. We just have to go, you know? Like we can't just tell people because now we're not focused and we're diluted with all of everybody else's stuff. And then it says, this book of the law shall not depart from your mouth, but you shall meditate on it day and night so that you may be careful to do according to all that is written in it. For then you will make your way prosperous and then you will have success. Have I not commanded you be strong and courageous. Do not tremble or be dismayed for the Lord your God is with you wherever you go. Okay. So that is a mouthful for you. That sums up this whole thing. Like he's telling us, we talked about meditation. He just talked about meditate. Mm -hmm. <laughs> <laughs> you have to get in that place of meditation and you have to focus so that you can see what it is that he's telling you to see, you know, what comes in our imagination, we think it because he gives it to us. It don't just happen. Right. It doesn't. Because he said, I, I'm going to give you your heart's desire, but usually your heart's desire comes from him. Yep. So yep. what's the source? And you have to meditate in order to even know what it is. Right. Mm hmm See, that's a confirmation because when he give us the word to back it up. Yeah. <laughs> you, <laughs> you be sure. I'm, I'm, I'm lost for words right now. It's so powerful. Yes. <laughs> He's given, he just gave us the word to back up this podcast today. So this is signed, sealed, and delivered because he confirmed it with his word. <laughs> Nicole, you like? <laughs> yeah, because you know what? That it it there's not there's not anything else that can be said. I mean, he he is right there. He's given us, you know, the Bible is our is our guide, and he's given he gave us everything that was needed for us to um, be prosperous. It's up to us to use it now. Right. It really is. He's told us exactly what to do. You know, this meditation thing is maybe a new phenomenon for some people, but it's been there. It, right. It clearly was what you just read, you know, mm -hmm. the being laser focused, don't look to the left, don't look to the right. That's not a new phenomenon. That has always been there. Mm -hmm. So now it's up to us. What are we going to do about it? Mm -hmm. And when I tell you this really blessed my own soul. Mm, me too. Um. <laughs> And knowing that we have to do the work, write the vision and make it plain. That's Habeka. Yes. So for, for all of those who come behind us that can read it and they can run with it. So if we're not clear about our own vision, then somebody else that's coming behind us to help us is not going to be clear about it either. They're going to be just as confused. Mm -hmm. So in order for you to write the vision, you have to go back to J uh, Joshua chapter one. And he says, be focused. Meditate on this word day and night so that you can be successful. So that you can get the vision. 
And mm -hmm. Joshua needed a vision to be able to carry on leading these people. The blind can't be led in the blind. He had to have a vision. He had to know where these people were going. He had a huge assignment to lead these people through the promised land, not just into the promised land, but through it. Because he was problem. dropping people out in different locations. So he had to go take territory and set tribes in different places. 12 tribes he had to establish. Mm -hmm. How could he have done that if he didn't meditate on the word of God, get the vision and the instructions to be able to do it? Mm. How? Wow. Powerful. That is that right there tells you the only way to do it is to become laser focused. Right. That's the only way. Hmm. It's right there. Hmm. I mean, I've got chills, guys. <laughs> Ooh, this is this is like this is what I need. I don't know if you needed it, but I know I sure needed it. Yeah. <laughs> And the thing is, is that if people need therapy to get there, then that's what you need. I mean, he, he, he had, God has the intelligence to be able to create people uh, and give them the, the, the gift to be mm -hmm. able to help, you know? But listen, every king had a prophet to consult, mm -hmm. wise counsel. Mm -hmm. Every king had wise counsel to be able to consult. So. You do have to have someone to go and talk to. And um, a lot of people that are being positioned as licensed counselors, therapists, and all of that, God is strategically placing these people mm -hmm. with his mind, not their own mind, because he knows the minds of his people are jumped up. So he put his divine wisdom and counsel into people like you, Nicole. Mm. to help people to see what they could never see that they've been blocked out from being able to see because they have too much junk and trash in their minds hmm. love it yep so yep. go see nicole go see me <laughs> you know how these people come with oh. you absolutely um you know, you can, people can always follow you on IG, um, which is House of Steel INC, and that's going to be H-O-U-S-E-S-O-F-S-T-I-L-L-I-N-C, -L -L and, um, or you can give us a call at 301-433-8777, and then always an email is great. Uh, we love emails, and so it's going to be info at House of Steel Dot com and that again is going to be house h-o-u-s-e of o-f and then still is spelled s-t-i-l-l dot com oh my god i'm so honored that nicole has been able to join us today and we are back rolling with our third saturdays of the month so people tune in catch us every third saturday of the month for therapy saturdays um we are doing this is actually sunday that you'll be having this drop but we'll be back on schedule next uh, month. And I am totally appreciative to Nicole that she takes her time to be able to do this because there are people that really tune in. We get a lot of listeners when Nicole comes on. <laughs> we okay. get a lot of listeners anyway, but I guess even more when you talk about therapy Saturdays, you know, because yeah. people are really needing to hear from professionals. And, and I, I tell people that, you know, if they yeah. need us to do telehealth, telehealth is always available. Right. And jump and that's that's the beauty of this pandemic. It has opened up other options for us and people are becoming more receptive, especially in the um in the black and brown communities. Um, I am also excited. My coaching um, business is going to be launching in the next month and a half. So I'm excited about that Yay. too. So I'll be open for business too um, to start taking in some sessions if you, as far as spiritual counseling. You know, um, I am all about the soul and uh, I'm called to help you get delivered. <laughs> so whatever you are struggling with, uh, you know, sexual immoralities and all of these different things you know that's my call the deliverance is my thing so mm -hmm. 
um, get ready for that. And I'll be launching that in the next month and a half. So I'm super duper excited. We're almost done with the website. So you'll be able to go and book a consultation. And even if you just need business coaching, I'm all here for it. I am teaching those people. If you, you need help with launching a small business, come to my website. I'll be letting you know what it is and just book me. I mean, um, I have a plethora of experience. I have um, 17 years of career development and experience, staffing and consulting that I'm going to be bringing to the table as, as a life coach. So I'm looking forward to it. I told, it's a lot of things on the horizon. We need to be laser focused. Yes. So we can put out what it is that we are supposed to be doing. So these podcasts are not for nothing. This is just one avenue that you can get assistance on this platform, but then I'm putting in other avenues that you will be able to get assistance as well, as well as partnering with Nicole on this show and for other future events that I plan to launch as well. So we are here for you. And remember, partnering is the thing. You can't get to where you're going unless you partner this year. We have stalled out on the singleness. You hear me? I'm telling you. <laughs> you can't do a singleness. You got to partner with somebody in 2022. Business, professionally, personally, think about it. Sit before the Lord and let him lead and guide you. But this is the year of divine partnerships. You know, people are merging their businesses with other people. So if you don't, be shy about it. If he tells you to merge your business with somebody else, do that too, you know, because it's an even greater blessing in it for you if you're obedient. So mm -hmm. we are glad that you were able to tune in with us on today and we will be catching you on the next show. Bye for now. Bye. Thank you for tuning in to Fire Unfiltered with your host, LaTangela Rogers. We pray and trust that what was spoken caused your spirit to leap and desire more of God. If so, contact us by email at info at roseofjericho-cd.org and to support the broadcast, visit us at www.roseofjericho-cd.org. Until the next time, stay blessed and stay on fire!